Hello and welcome to course of digital image processing using Python. I am Mahmud and we will discuss spatial filter, especially box and Gaussian filter for smoothing of images and median filter for noise removal. Let us connect our previous learning uh, with our new topic which is mass cooperation. Uh, Say we have an image uh, which we want to transform and we need each pixel in the image and transform it using lookup table. Uh, I mean the lookup table generated from this transformation or any transformation. And we save the transformed gray level, gray scale in a new image like this. On contrary, the mass cooperation, our image filter is very analogous to filtering in signal processing if you know about uh, signal processing and convolution specifically. Uh, but the process is uh, quite simple. Now we have an image like this one uh, just for example and a 3x3 three three mask. This 3x3 three three mask, um, we can call it a filter, a kernel, a template, a mask. Uh, we will discuss tens of masks, I mean different values of and different sizes in this course uh, for variety of applications. So how we produce output image? It is simple, just align the mask, given mask, uh, with the top left corner of given image. Uh, then multiply their corresponding values. I mean, uh, it's not a matrix multiplication. It's a value by value multiplication. We have a 3 by 3 uh, array over here and a 3 by 3 value array over here. Uh, then you have to multiply corresponding elements or entries just like this 4 into 0, 0 into 0, then 0 into 0 and so on. All 9 values and then sum them up to get say minus 8. We got minus 8. Four in, minus 4 into 2 is minus 8 and all of the values are zeros as we have mostly zero values in our mask only a non zero 4 and a minus 4 along the line so we got minus 8 and then we place that resultant value at the same location where the mask is centered our source pixel within the uh, source image Then, then we mask, then we move this mask towards right over here and then we keep moving. Uh, definitely we will discuss later in this lecture in detail. Before discussing 2D convolution, let's discuss uh, a little about the application uh, just for motivation. The image on the top left position is the original image. And rest of uh, the four images are produced using filtering and variety of masks. So you can see we can produce variety of outputs just by uh, applying mass cooperation or filtering. Um, another example, uh, the top left image is the original, uh, original image. And you can observe the crisp of the details image displayed on bottom right position uh, this one as compared to this one another example and this time an IZ image this is the source image our input image uh, on the leftmost position is the original image and is corrupted or con contaminated by a noise which is though reduced using uh, one mask and completely removed using an auto statistic filter. We will discuss this auto statistic filter um, at the end of this lecture, uh, which are different in implementation from convolution as I introduced on first slide. So, let us discuss the process of 2D convolution in detail. Initially, center this mask or kernel with the top left corner of the source or input image, then compute the dot product of these two images 
दो वी आर यूज टू कम्प्यूट डॉट वर्क ऑफ वन डी अरेस बट इन केस ऑफ दिस टू डी टेम्पलेट्स और टू डी अरेस वी हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई बोथ अरेज वैल्यू बाई वैल्यू क्रस्पॉन्डिंग वैल्यूज लाइक फोर विद जीरो जीरो विद जीरो एंड सो ऑन अप टू द लास्ट वैल्यू सो वी गॉट एंड देन सम दम आप वी गॉट माइनस एट देन यू कैन राइट माइनस एट ओवर हेयर एंड देन मूव दिस मास टू द नेक्स्ट पोजिशन लाइक ओवर हेयर एंड दिस वे नो वी हैव सेंटर्ड दिस मास एट दिस पिक्सल and then once again computer dot dot product and you will get exactly minus 8 once again so place minus 8 in the next next location then move template and center it over here now our mask is centered at this position and after multiplying this mask or kernel with these nine values we will get minus 4 and so on we can move up to this location then we will get 0 0 over here and after completion of this scan of first line we can move towards the next line like uh, this one now we are centered at this pixel now multiply the mask with this matrix r array to the array 3 by 3 array um computer dot product and then write the value over here and then you can move this kernel over entire image this process is called 2d convolution you can observe uh, one thing that we cannot fill up the top and the bottom rows and similarly the leftmost column and the rightmost column Uh, but we will discuss it later on we do have some solutions like uh, the source image is like 7 by 7 values but our output image would be like 5 by 5 values as um a row of pixel or a column of pixels are left unfilled Uh, now we have originally a six by six image and a three by three mask. There are two ways to get output image with the same size as the input image, like six by six. One is to pad each side of the input image with zeros, like this one. These are the extra rows, two rows and two columns are appended or padded with the original image. Now you can align. this mask at the top left corner of the original image and then computer dot per you will get like minus 10 and then keep moving this mask along the row then next row then next row and you can fill up perfectly 6 by 6 array uh, other option is to replicate the border pixel of the image and in many cases it is a better solution uh, in case of mask with like 5 by 5 a mask with size 5 by 5 and we want to align the center of the mask like this pixel or this value uh with the top left corner i mean this pixel value then we have to append at least two rows on the top and two columns on the left side and similarly two columns on the right side and two rows on the bottom like this one 
now you can align this mask at this position like this now we have a 5x5 five five mask then we can we have to append at least two rows and two columns on each side of the input image if it's a 3x3 three three mask then we require at least one row and one column on each side of the input image and similarly for 7x7 seven seven, it would be like three rows and three columns and so on so forth um, the other option is to replicate the border pixels uh, just by mirroring or flipping the values like we have a 4 and 5 over here uh, we have 4 and 5 over here and these two values are flipped and extended like this 4 5 and similarly 2 3 are flipped or mirrored as 3 2 and so on however you have option how you fill this uh, rectangular box uh, this uh, diagonal box like one way is to replicate one over here and then replicate this three over here the other option is to just select any of these values and however you can replicate and flip the two border pixels uh, with the original image just to get um, an image so that you can center a 5x5 five five mask definitely after convolution you can drop or remove these extended pixels like um, uh, two pixels from each side in this case and one pixel from each side in case of 3x3 three three mask Here is just an animation of the same process. We have a 3x3 three three mask and then it is aligned with the top left corner and we are just replicating the border pixels and keep moving our corner to the next value like this one. So that's the, it's called sharpened image because we have a mask which sharpens the image or sharpens the boundaries so so initially we computed simple dot product of uh, template with the image values and then we scan the whole image like first row then second row and then third row and so on though we have built-in functions in almost all programming languages with uh, packages and libraries available for image processing but it is great to know the mathematics of 2d convolution as this can help you in implementation in case where you do not have functionality of 2d convolution so we have input image original image and let's start uh, assigning some mathematics to all the um, uh, components so the input image uh, we have a we have x axis along a vertical axis and y along horizontal axis and the reason is in programming um, the arrays are indexed like first index represents the rows and in any array rows are increasing towards this direction that's the zero row, then first row second row and so on and similarly the second index in programming languages represents the column and columns are increasing in this direction so we have x in this direction and y in this direction and we call this array as f and any pixel in this array is like f of x y say so we have this patch of image and the center pixel is f of x y and we are calling this image as f and this pixel is f of x y then definitely this pixel is f of x minus 1 
comma y uh, because uh, x is increasing in this direction and then x plus 1 comma y and similarly this pixel is x comma y minus 1 because y is y is increasing in this direction and this is f of x y and this is f of x comma y plus 1 and we can write exactly the indices of these four values like f of x minus 1 y minus 1 and similarly x plus 1 and y plus 1 so we can write the indices and we can represent this small patch of this image f and its indices now we have this 3 by 3 template a kernel a mask its central value is w of 0 0 and uh, first index is increasing in this direction so that's minus 1 and that's plus 1 and similarly the y index is increasing in sorry y index is increasing in this direction and x index is increasing in this direction so x is minus 1 x is 0 and x is plus 1 and similarly this is minus 1 minus 1 location and plus 1 plus 1 now dot product of these two 2d arrays can be written like this w of s t w of s comma t multiplied by f of x plus s just like 0 0 x y and then 0 1 x y plus 1 so it's like we are adding this s and t in x y so x plus s and y plus t then they then their product is summed over uh, s and t where s is from minus a to a and t is from minus b to b in our case it's minus 1 to 1 and b is minus 1 to 1 in case of uh, just a, a 3 by 3 template say we have a template uh, our kernel of 5 by 5 size then definitely this a and b would be 2 uh, then this summation would be like minus 2 to 2 and then minus 2 to 2 and then this template will be a 5 by 5 template and similarly we will select a 5 by 5 patch from our input image so just that dot product is represented as this sum of products these are the products multiplication of corresponding values and then sum over all the values and we will get some say value and we will save that value in our output image which is g of x y at same location where uh, this template is, template is uh, centered i mean So mostly images are noisy and nice is anything in the image that we are not interested in like uh, light fluctuation or sensor noise, uh, quantization effects, sensor noise is like at uh, some electronic circuit level and then quantization noise is like at some digital level, then finite precision is once again our digital system limitation but in general smoothing reduces noise. So we have a cameraman image with small patch of this image is plotted as our 3D function. I mean uh, x axis and y axis and the intensity is in third dimension like this one. So it's a 3D image not a 2D image. Uh, say this is the x direction this is the y direction of the image and then the intensities are plotted in third dimension. So it's a very noisy surface apparently uh, whereas mm, apparently uh, in original image it's very smooth surface but in 3d plot it's really noisy so we can smooth smooth this surface by using some filter some sort of filter uh, there could be a variety of filters uh, but right now we just apply some filter and we can get a surface like this one a very smooth surface with uh, some variations representing some original information say so there could be a variety of filters but uh, box filter for simple averaging or a gaussian filter which is a 
center pixel weighted and some more uh, variety of uh, masks are available but these are the mostly two mostly used uh, filters uh, here is the mask or kernel of 3x3 box filter also called averaging filter uh, if we convolve this filter with pixel values of an image then it is like uh, adding nine pixel values aligned with this kernel and then dividing the sum with nine so which is perfectly average of nine pixel values similarly we can write a five by five box filter with the one one by twenty five multiplied by a five by five array of ones as all values of the mask sum to one so overall tone of the image will not be altered like uh, uh, sum of these values 1 by 9 9 times is equal to 1 and similarly 1 by 25 21 times 25 times is sum to 1 uh, here, here we have an example it's a cameraman image original ca original image and it's a smooth image which is convolved with 11 by 11 box filter so a template or a kernel of size 11 by 11 so it's a smooth image there's no sharp boundaries in that image here's the python code for 2d convolution uh, libraries are imported in first three lines uh, numpy opencv and then matplotlib uh, then an image like uh, img.png is loaded using cv that I am read and online 13 a 5x5 five five kernel is designed using np.1s um, of numpy library and type casted to float32 as function of 2d convolution requires kernel to be a float type so in our next line next line next cv.filter2d implements 2d convolution which we discussed earlier and first argument is the input image second argument is the depth uh, and if it, if we pass minus 1 then it means return the same depth of the in input image just like input image and the third is a kernel which is designed on line 13 uh, so the function can be used for any kernel of your choice you can design any arbitrary kernel and you can use this filter 2d to implement 2D convolution with any image. Then some lines of the code to display images, both images original and the average uh, smooth image. And these two highlighted lines can be replaced uh, with cv.blur. Uh, but remember, this is only for box filter, not for arbitrary kernel. If you would like to implement some arbitrary kernel of your choice, then you have to use cv.filter2d and then you have to pass the image and the kernel whereas in case of blur you have to pass the image and then the next uh, just a tuple uh, mentioning size of the uh, box filter so it is assumed that distribution of noise in image is Gaussian in nature uh, averaging attenuates noise but this could be perfect for small patch selected in this image like this one uh, but could be worse if there is a sharp patch in the image and the application requires to preserve that sharp patch so there is always a trade off we have to be careful while selecting the kernel and its size i mean the values of the kernel the values of the kernel and its size like 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 7 by 7 and so on so there must be some balancing act like smooth enough to clean up the nice but not so much as to remove important image gradients weighted average uh, this time we have same size but values in the kernel are uh, giving more weights to the center value uh, just to make comparison we can take this 1 over 16 as common we will be left with 1, 2, 1, and then 2, 4, 2, and then 1, 2, 1. So you can observe 
this kernel is multiplying the central value with maximum weight like 4 and then the adjacent values are multiplied by 2 and the values in the diagonal are multiplied by 1 and the total sum of these values is 16 so we have normalized this template with the 16 to get total sum equal to 1 so this is called weighting uh, weighted smoothing this is better than the box filter because um, it is multiplying with the higher weight uh, to the pixel of interest or source pixel. Okay, we have even better solution like Gaussian smoothing filter. Okay, just uh, to clarify uh, one thing that we are using Gaussian of two variables to design a kernel. Like this mathematical function to design some kernel or template or mass whereas Gaussian knives which we discussed earlier are random values contaminating the image pixels and distribution distribution of that random values are assumed Gaussian distribution so that Gaussian knives is very much different from this Gaussian smoothing filter the only common thing is the shape of this filter and distribution of that knife. So, we have a bivariate Gaussian, this bivariate Gaussian uh, plotted in 3D. This is the x direction and y direction, and the third direction is the uh, function or surface, Gaussian surface. Uh, the same function is plotted as a gray level image and then a 5 by 5 Gaussian uh, kernel I mean this is the topographic image of the same function and we have selected just a 5 by 5 matrix from the center of this topographic image and we got this template of Gaussian with Sigma equal to 1 uh, which is like a weighted kernel. I mean uh, more weights to the center values and less weights to the values away from center like 41 to the center value and then 26 then 16 then 7 then 4 then 1 so it's assigning more weight to the value of interest or central value. Uh, look at the shape of the Gaussian function. Right now we have only one critical parameter and it's sigma and this represents the variance of this bell shaped curve, uh, bell shaped surface. Uh, say if sigma is 1, it's like this one, and if sigma is 2, it would be like a Gaussian surface but with more um, with more variance or more spread uh, from its central value. So we can change sigma to have different kernels, uh, even with same size. So here is a better illustration of the same concept. We have a Gaussian curve, Gaussian surface and then we can sample this Gaussian surface just by specifying the values of S and T or X and Y uh, and we can compute some numerical values and then we can normalize this kernel, say it's a 3 by 3 kernel and then we can normalize this kernel by the sum of these values like we got 4.8 nine seven six just for normalization uh, because we want sum of all the values equal to one this is the same code the only difference is cv dot gaussian blah so it's a built it's a uh, uh, function available in open cv cv2 library um, and it is called on line 12 just uh, to blur an image using Gaussian filter. So you have to um, pass first parameter as the input image, second um, the Gaussian size of and then uh, mean. Sorry, I mean uh, the standard deviation, sigma. Uh, 
so you can mention sigma x and sigma y but if uh, you pass only one parameter then it means sigma x and sigma y are same so in our case it's zero zero mean uh, it has to calculate uh, standard deviation from this kernel size and then some plotting So a comparison of uh, smoothing using box and Gaussian filter. Uh, box filter causes some high frequency artifacts, uh, also called ringing effect, and it's a wavy pattern like uh, you can observe uh, just on the right and left side of the stand, camera stand, and it's a wavy pattern. Whereas Gaussian perfectly smooth out all the region, so it's a, a better low pass filter, like. In this zoom damage. So this is the original image, and it's uh, it's a smooth image using a Gaussian with sigma equal to one, a seven by seven Gaussian kernel with sigma equal to one. And similarly, a uh, same Gaussian size but sigma equal to three. And then same Gaussian kernel size, but sigma equal to 10. So as we increase the sigma, our variance, our standard deviation of the kernel, then we get more and more smoothing. Here's a test pattern. It's a well-known test pattern with a variety of contents like uh, lines, horizontal and vertical lines and lines at different angles. Uh, then alphabets of different sizes and different gray colors and some noisy patterns. I mean some less noisy pattern and a more noisy pattern. So this is the original image on the leftmost position and it's filtered with using two different Gaussian kernels. One with 21 by 21 kernel size and sigma is 3.7 whereas this image is smooth using uh, Gaussian kernel of size 43 by 43 and sigma equal to 7. So we got more smoother. So here is another pattern uh, just to observe um, the difference between box and the Gaussian filter. So uh, this image is uh, smooth using a uh, box filter whereas this is smooth using Gaussian kernel. So parameters were selected to give a blurred rectangle of approximately the same width and height in order to show the effect of filter on comparable basis. Uh, so you can see in case of box filter we got some linear smoothing um, and similarly we got some linear ramp function for this rectangular pulse. Uh, in case of Gaussian we got uh, really a smooth version of the same pulse and it's not linear in its behavior or profile. Whereas in case of Gaussian uh, it produced really a smoother result around the edges um, transition and we would use this type of filter when generally uniform smoothing is uh, required. So one of the uh, principal cause of image shading is non-uniform illumination. So shading correction also called flat field correction is important because uh, shading is common cause of erroneous measurements a uh, degraded uh, performance say we have a space image uh, taken from uh, a hexon compact group a hubble telescope so it's a huge image of huge size i mean pixels along axis and along y axis but there is some uh, shaded region different illuminations. So if a scientist would like to measure some dimensions along any direction, 
it would be better to first smooth it out like this one and then apply thresholding to get a better estimate of the size of this uh, clutter of stars or galaxy or some solar system like our solar system so it's a better way to first smooth and then threshold the image to get some better estimate of the size so the name filter is borrowed from frequency domain processing where filtering refers to a passing modifying or rejecting specified frequency components of an image so a filter that passes low frequencies is called low pass filter and the overall effect of that low pass filter would be like a smooth image or blurred image and similarly a filter that passes high frequencies is called high pass, high pass filter and the net effect uh, would be like uh, high uh, sharpen image or image with more enhanced boundaries and edges so spatial filtering is all about objects, shapes, uh, contents of the image, not the colors as compared with the point pixel operation, where point pixel operation is purely about tone of the image or color contents of the image, whereas in spatial filtering, we talk about objects and contents of the image. Order statistic filters. So we have some image but no kernel with values. Uh, this time this 3 by 3 array is filled with original image values. Exactly the values of the values from this image. These 9 values are then sorted in ascending or descending order. Uh, replace the value of the center pixel like this value center value of this template uh, by a median of the intensity values like center value in the sorted array so we are not multiplying or summing up our convolution to performing 2d convolution in this case uh, we have just sorted these nine values and selected this one based on uh, the criteria that this value is the median value in these nine values, the center value. And we replace this 255 with 96, that's it. And then we keep moving our template, our window along the image, just like 2D convolution. But we do not perform any multiplication or addition. We are just sorting and selecting the values. That's why it is called auto statistic filter. It's all about uh, selecting a certain value from certain window and then keep moving. So this is the reason this this concept of order stat statistic filter is called nonlinear filtering as compared to the 2D convolution. In case of 2D convolution, we perform some sum of products and that sum of products concept in mathematics is called uh, linear uh, filtering. Whereas this sorting concept is called nonlinear filter. So there could be a filter with some max value. Say we, re we replace this value with the max value, or this value with the min value, or this value with the average value. So there could be any type of statistical concept. So the original image, the original image is contaminated with impulse noise, and it's uh, also called the salt and paper noise. Like these are the dots, white and black dots. So noise values are either zero or close to zero values, and similarly, uh, the noise values are 255 or close to 255 values, which is which is like white dots. It is also called salt and paper noise. In case of Gaussian kernel, noise is reduced. A Gaussian kernel is applied. The noise is reduced, and uh, but at the cost of blurring. 
whereas the median filter has perfectly restored the image uh, by filtering out extreme values like zeros and 255. So the image is filling out using uh, the median filter. So median filter perfectly performs in case of salt and pepper knife. And salt and pepper knife is a special type where the image is contaminated with extreme values like values like close to zero or values like close to 255. Purely white pixels or purely black pixels. Once again, it's the same code, uh, but we have used uh, CV dot medium blur of 3 by 3 size. So you have to pass only two parameters. One is the image, input image, and other is the size of the uh, window. So, it's, so there is no kernel or no template. So we call it just a window of uh, the image which is used for median filter. So let's stop uh, this lecture over here. We will discuss uh, high pass filters or more templates in our next lecture. Hopefully, uh, a good one.